everybody, it's Deborah. Um, I realized I hadn't done a sewing check-in in a little while and I wanted to kind of keep that series going. Um, I am working from home today because I was expecting a delivery of a new mower <laughs> and um, I didn't want it to sit out in my yard for two reasons. Um, this is tempting <laughs> and I didn't want it to grow legs and walk away. And also, too, we've had severe weather here the last few days. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you saw my little post about the tornado warnings the other night. Luckily, that we were um, we were fortunate that it weakened before it got to us. But we've got more today, and um, we've already had one line of storms come through, and there's another one behind it. So I'm working from home. I uh, just got finished with my classes for the day. And I was thinking about some things um, this morning. And I don't know where this came from exactly, um, but I don't like gatekeeping, all right? I was talking to my friend Raina the last time I was on her podcast, the Desperate House Witches podcast. We were talking about gatekeeping in the um, pagan community and how it's a bummer. And I don't like gatekeeping, period. I don't like it where it shows up anyway. Now, granted, there are certain benchmarks. Like, I had to achieve certain things to be able to get my PhD. I had to achieve certain things to be able to get my, um, my, to full professor. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about these are the expectations for you to reach these goals. I'm talking about somebody saying, well, you're not a real this or this or that because you don't fall into my expectation in terms of not, you know, the standard of work but things like you don't sew with a, a certain type of sewing machine, or you don't use a certain type of fabric, or you only make these type of garments, or you've never made one of these, or, you know, in the knitting community, it's, oh, I knit every pattern put out by a certain designer and only in the very best hand dyed yarn, uh, or I only use these type of needles or whatever. And generally, it's a classist thing to me. I find it to be a smacking of classism or classicism. Class, I don't know how you, whatever that, that is. Um, and, you know, it happens in all areas, really. It happens in academia. It happens in different uh, spiritual beliefs. It happens in the crafting world. I find that really irritating because it's, it's anything it can do to elevate other people by smashing other people down. And I think that that's wrong. I'm here to tell you, if you make something and you make it with your own, by your own, if you make it yourself, your own hands, you're a crafter. If you sewed it on a sewing machine, you're a sewist. If you knitted it with knitting needles, I don't care what kind of knitting needles they are, straight, circular, you know, expensive, not expensive, you're a knitter. If you crocheted it with a crochet hook, you're a crocheter. If you stitched it, you're a stitcher. There's, gatekeeping is stupid. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And I find it really frustrating because I work on a budget. I mean, yeah, occasionally I'll see something that I just really love and I'll kind of splurge a little bit, but I love a good sale. I love a good free pattern. Usually if I get a, several free patterns from certain designers, I'll try to purchase patterns from them also. There is nothing wrong with making yourself, avail, availing yourself of the free patterns that are out there. There is nothing wrong with knitting yourself a sweater from a free pattern with acrylic yarn because you know what i love a good acrylic yarn sweater because i can put it in the washer and dryer of course right now i can't put it in the dryer because my dryer is not working but i think it's ridiculous for people to try to make themselves feel superior to others by looking down on someone who works on a budget i sew with thrift store finds i knit with thrift store finds i i anytime anybody says do you want these craft supplies, generally my answer is yes. Because if I can't use them, I'll pass them on to somebody else who will. Um, I just find it repugnant that people try to inject classism everywhere. And ultimately, you know, if you want to make the argument, ultimately it's about white supremacy. I mean, I hate to say that, but it's the truth. It's about people trying to make themselves feel superior to others because they 
you know, they feel like that they have the corner on the market of craft, whatever that craft may be. Um, I'm here to tell you, I'm not about that life. <laughs> so I just, this was, that was on my mind this morning. Um, because I think it deters a lot of people from trying a craft Craft, you know, learning to knit and crochet, there's enough obstacles to doing that anyway without these artificial obstacles. You know, whether it's sewing or knitting or crocheting or stitching or painting or drawing or whatever you want to do. Just do it. Just do it. I promise you, if you run into somebody that's trying to gatekeep you, I promise you there are a thousand of us out there that will help you. You know, you just got to find your people. So, what I thought I would do today, if I can get Baxter off of me for five seconds, is I would show you a couple of patterns that I picked up on sale or that were free, and then show you some fabric that I've gotten recently and kind of talk about my sewing plans. I haven't been doing as much sewing the last month or so because I've been really busy outside with my garden uh, and also school in April. April in academia is always the notoriously busy month because everybody's trying to get their meetings in, everybody's trying to get all these different activities in and so sewing has kind of gotten pushed to the wayside um for me i've been doing other crafting but sewing i tend to prefer to do it during the daytime for whatever reason and when i'm not tired so i don't end up having to rip stuff out um so just haven't been doing a whole lot of sewing you can see this same dress behind me here that i haven't worked on in a month or more but i thought i would share with you a couple of patterns also you know Look out for free, look out for free patterns. There are free patterns that are actually free, not bootlegged patterns, um, you know, that are out there that you can get by either subscribing to newsletters or I think I mentioned if you buy a pattern from Stylark, they'll have a free pattern if you go through their website. There's lots of opportunities out there to get free patterns or exchange patterns. Go to, you know, exchange patterns with somebody or go to a thrift store and find patterns. Um, you know, there's lots of ways to make yourself patterns or find a garment that you like and take it apart and make your own pattern. Um, but anyway, so let me show you what I've got. I guess Baxter's not going to get down. So the first two are some Ellie and Mac patterns. When they discontinue their patterns, they usually offer them for sale for like a dollar or maybe two dollars. Uh, if you watch their, uh, their targeted marketing, you know, or if you get on their website regularly or you get their newsletter, they will um, offer a sale. So this is the first one that I got. This is the curved hem pocket tank pattern. So this is a tank top, but it has pockets. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> so uh, I like the tank top, this tank top, because it's got wider straps on it. And because I'm a bigger woman and I tend to wear support garments that have wider straps, um, I like the wider straps on this. Uh, it comes in sizes. Let's see. Does it have the size range on it? Generally, their patterns go up to a 5X, so I'm assuming that this one does too. Now, this one goes from a double extra small to a 6XL. So, this is if this pattern is still available, this would be a great one to get. This is for knit fabrics, okay? And it has an optional high-low hemline or curved hemline. And... Um, yeah, so it's just got a lot of a lot of options on it. So you can make yourself several different tank tops out of one pattern. The next one I got, I know is a discontinued pattern. This is an older pattern. I don't know if it's still available or, or not, but you might check. This is the fireside sweater pattern. And this is a long tunic style uh, pattern. Okay, it is, I like the back detail on it. I like that back. And it's meant to be worn with like leggings or skinny jeans or whatever. But I like the fact, I like that. It looks like a nice comfy, almost like a comfy sweatshirt. And that's what the fabric looks like that they've made it out of. And this goes from a double extra small to a 4XL. I don't know if this is still available on their website or not. I think the last time I got on there and looked, it was still there. So you might check that out. But I know this is one of their ones that they're discontinuing. So... You might want to check that out. Then I joined a, a mailing list and I meant to look up who I joined it for. Um, it was a fabric company's mailing list. And if you join their mailing list, you got a free McCall's PDF. So this was the pattern that they were offering. This is M7969. 
and it is this cute little dress. It's kind of right. It reminds me of the Hope dress by Style Art. Okay, it's it's cut a little bit differently than the Hope dress, though. Um, let's see what pattern sizes it ranges from. Let's see. Uh, it only goes up from an extra small to a double extra large, which is a 26. But I think you could pretty easily grade this up to larger sizes if you needed to. So I think I spent a total of $3 on those three patterns. Yes, I've got to put them together. I personally like the PDF patterns because you don't have to be so precious about them. And like if you are cutting something out and you accidentally cut into your pattern, you just go print another piece. And I'm notorious for that. <laughs> Um, but anyway, I wanted to show you some, some fabrics that I was thinking about working with. Now, this first one is some fabric that was in my mom's stash. I don't know how much of it I've got. I don't have a lot, but I just really thought it was kind of fun and, and summery, and it made me happy to look at it. It's this really cute polka dot print. Now, this is a rayon feel uh, fabric or a chalet, maybe. It's hard to tell. I think I've got enough of this to cut a top out of. Now, it doesn't have any stretch to it, so it's going to have to be a woven top. But I think that would make a super cute summer top or even a little cute summer skirt. You know, um, I think it looks like I've got, it looks like it's a little bit wider than 22 inches. No, yeah, no, it's 44. It's probably 44 wide. And then it's, I've got about a yard and a half or two yards of it. So, uh, we'll see what I can, can do with that. It's a super cute little fabric, though. I might find something where I cut it on the bias or use it as an accent for something, but I thought that was super cute. That was some of my mom's fabric. It feels like a chalet. Then I have a, ma a lap full of Baxter. <laughs> yes, he's a good boy. I have these two pieces of flannel that I got from Joann's on sale when they had their super snuggle flannel for $2.99 a yard. Uh, I got these little foxes. I got four yards of that. And then, uh, excuse me, I got this uh, Stronger Together. And I got four yards of that. These are both Super Snuggle Flannel. Again, I don't, I like the Super Snuggle Flannel for like a transition piece. It's soon going to be too hot to wear it. But if, if I go into the office, my office is cool enough. My building is cold enough that I can get away with wearing it even in the summertime at work if I didn't have to do too much outside. So those are just some things. And I wanted to share my thoughts with you about gatekeeping and kind of give you a little check-in. Don't be discouraged. If you want to try a craft, try it. The worst thing that's going to happen is you make a mistake and you have to take it out. But don't let the idea that you have to have the most expensive sewing machine or the most expensive needles or you have to be able to knit, you know, if you're not a real knitter, if you don't knit socks or if you don't knit a sweater or you're not a real cross stitcher, if all, you know, if you choose to only work on, say, 14 count Ada, um, that's all I ever cross-stitched on until recently. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. There is, it is perfectly fine. It gives a different look is all, but maybe you like that look. I just dislike this idea of if you don't do this, you're not a real that. I remember getting really torqued off in a, in an online group one time because people were saying, well, you're not a real knitter if you don't do this. That's bull, y'all. I'm just telling you, that's bull. As Brene Brown says, you don't need a permission slip to be these things, but if you need one, here you go. Here's your permission slip from good old Dr. Deborah. <laughs> There's your hall pass. And Baxter says so too, right? Baxter says so too. He says it's okay too. Yeah, you're rotten. Anyway, thanks for hanging out, y'all, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.